folks and welcome to They Might Be Racing. Uh, today we're starting on the third step of our restoration of our 1969 Austin Healey Sprite Mark IV. Uh, Tiffany happens to be in the house working on things with the kids today, so it's just me out here. And what we will be doing is pulling the exhaust off of this car. Now most folks who are experienced with auto restoration wouldn't consider this actually a full on step. But what this allows you to do is, in addition to getting the exhaust out of the way, which is very important when it comes to getting other pieces of the car exposed, this is your first real opportunity to get down underneath the car, spend some time taking a look at it. You'll want to be able to get down there and really study what the undercarriage of the car looks like. This will be important for you know, getting the gas tank out, for pulling the transmission, for checking to ensure that the body is in appropriate shape down there. Um, so there's a lot of stuff involved. Um, but basically, the simple part of it is, is really just removing the exhaust. Um, now, normally on most of my restoration steps, it's pull whatever the assembly is, immediately restore it, and then stock it away somewhere. Now, in the case of an exhaust system, because of the bulk, and because nine times out of ten it gets pitched and, and replaced, there isn't really a restoration point here. Uh, what, what we normally do is just simply hold off, we acquire the exhaust once the engine is back in the car, or once we're putting the engine back in the car, and it's one of the very last assemblies to go back on. Uh, so this is mainly just a pull, a survey of the underneath of the car, and uh, getting ready for next steps. Now you may say, note that I have a strange appliance attached to my head. I got a new toy, and we're going to try it out videotaping underneath. Hopefully this will give you video of exactly where I'm looking at rather than having a camera basically pointed at me as I try to describe what I'm doing. So without further ado we'll go ahead and get down and get underneath the car. So despite having only two buttons I obviously have not mastered the GoPro video camera because as you can tell there is no exhaust on this car. Uh, got all the way through the removal only to realize I hadn't been recording. It's kind of difficult when you realize that the camera's on your head and you can't see it, but so it goes. So a quick recap. The original exhaust should have had a hanger here. It did not. It was missing. So there was nothing to redo, undo there. As we were here, we stopped and we looked at this inner panel here and spent more time on that inner panel here where you could actually see the rust has come through. So as part of our work we're going to have to go through and repair those as well. We paused for a moment and took a look at the gas tank and saw that the bolts were intact. The tank itself sounds really good and it's got some guck on the uh, drain which means there might still be some varnish in the tank to drain out when we remove it. So we slid forward and took time, we saw that the springs looked okay, uh, the shocks were going to rebuild anyways. The differential doesn't look like it's too bad, I don't see any major leaks. But what we do see is that the fuel pump has been replaced at some point with a facet and it was very poorly wired in, so that's going to have to be yanked out. We'll have to make a decision on whether or not we go with an aftermarket pump or a uh, proper SU pump. The main body, you'll see there's a bit of a hole here. Um, a couple of indentations. A little bit of rust, but overall not too bad. Some matching rust here. Nothing really worth writing home about. And you'll see that the main undercarriage is in good shape. The uh, fuel line continues through. We get to the... Um, transmission you'll see that the uh, transmission has been disconnected the slave cylinder is somewhere up in here we found it earlier it just wasn't connected there's a little bit of goo on the underside which means it's still leaking out oil speedometer still connected move forward and this little nifty clamp was what was holding the exhaust in place up front and the most important thing we learned when removing the exhaust was, if you can see that correctly, the exhaust manifold off the car has been broken. One of the ears is gone. So we know already, even though all we've done is remove the exhaust pipe, that that manifold is going to need to be replaced. 
Uh, the rest of the front of the car doesn't look too bad. Suspension doesn't look bad at all. I'm going to put new rubbers in all the way around anyways. Driver's side, not too bad. Huh, there's still some bluing on the tire from when they installed it. So, what we did here is remove the bolts. There is a mount halfway down the car where we removed. The third mount was missing so that we didn't have to do anything with. Um, and uh, now we'll pull out the exhaust and take a look at it up in the air and see what it looks like. All right, so now that we've got the exhaust out, you can see that overall, I mean, there are no holes in it, so technically that's okay. However, the clamp and the business end up at the manifold is completely rusted away, as is anything that was inside of it. The mid-length clamp is, uh, has definitely seen better days. It looks like somebody, I don't want to say cut it with a plasma the torch, acetylene torch, to make the bolt fit through. And the silencer is okay, but uh, at this state of the game, what we're going to do is we're going to yank this whole assembly, pitch it, and move on. And we'll get a brand new exhaust system for this car at the end of the project. So, uh, until next time, have fun. And whatever you're doing, make sure that when you've got the car up in the air, it's properly up on jack stands and everything is safe and secure. Bye.